Hey guys, so I want to give you guys an update on basically what I'm doing for my own PinePhone setup. I just finished installing, as one of my recent video shows, Full Disk Encryption, the Mobian installer. It does all the work for you, and you have full disk encryption. Why do you want full disk encryption? Well, say your phone is dead and you lose it somewhere. Well, nobody would be able to modify or look at your phone files without having your full disk encryption password. And if they don't have such a thing, they would only see scrambled data. What do I do next? I also have a script I wrote called YPry. And YPry, what that does is it's for privacy for Linux systems. And what happens is your wireless device is always broadcasting your permanent MAC address. It's like, a, think of it as a fingerprint serial number that is to your device, be it a phone or a computer or a MP3 player. Uh, anything with Wi-Fi is constantly giving out that MAC address and what Wi-Fi does is it has a variety of different settings that you can basically customize how that address will come out. You can use different brands. I put together different OUI lists, which are the brand names. When someone sees your MAC address or you connect to a wireless access point, consider this. In the Smart Cities Initiative and some of the other setups that are going on right now, there are hidden Wi-Fi sensors in trash cans on... Um, and basically, analytics are able to pick up and use some of those MAC addresses. And there's actually a map you can get, which I'm going to go over, which shows where every MAC address has been mapped out. Uh, some of the um, trucks that go around doing some of the satellite view uh, close-ups, they actually were mapping out MAC addresses. So that's another reason you want to use this. It also has extra settings for host name randomization, uh, TX power strength to kind of simulate uh, new devices. It has a setting for anonymous mode where you can uh, change. It will randomize your MAC address at the same time it randomizes your host name at the same time your TX power changes. So this setting is set to basically mimic devices. I have for my browser setup, let me talk about that. First off, when I'm home or if I'm traveling, I have a router I put together, a customized Torified privacy router. And that basically takes care of everything I need for me. So I can connect any type of device, uh, Torified, with um, some extra protections. But say I'm not with that router. If I don't have that router, I have a permanent setup for my cellular settings. I have two browsers. One browser does a direct connection to the internet. And I use Falcon for that one. Let me show you that. This is Falcon. It's actually really fast. It's a really nice browser. I got it from the software repository, I highly suggest checking out Falcon. It's an underrated browser. That one makes a direct connection. On the other hand, my Firefox is my Tor browser when I only have a cellular connection. And so basically, the anytime I use Firefox, that's for Torified stuff. I go through my preferences and I've basically stripped any kind of identifying uh, features and tried to minimize. And here is Fire Jail. What that does is a sandboxing. This is an easy to use configurator. And what a sandbox does is it, it forces an application that you set up to only run in a designated area. Basically, it can help protect your system from being exploited. I'm going to go over that in another video, but I wanted to introduce some of these things to you guys. Uh, there's also, of course, if you need to block incoming outgoing connections when your Pine phone or other Linux machine. There's IP tables, good old-fashioned IP tables. As my previous video talked about how I allow SSH server connections so I can basically quickly work from my laptop on my Pine phone, and it's a convenient way to work on it with having a full keyboard. So what did I do? I, I set up that SSH server as a hidden service. And what did I do then? I blocked any incoming connections to port 22 using IP tables just as a backup in case something went wrong with SSH configuration. I don't see any reason not to have backup blocking. So that is what I did there. And with settings, one thing always make sure to do if you're interested in protecting your privacy, whenever you're not using Bluetooth, turn off Bluetooth. Bluetooth, just like Wi-Fi, that MAC address is then broadcast out publicly. 
And you want to make sure you do that. And if you're worried about some of the more modern tracking systems like ultrasonic, some of the ones that work with your microphone, you can turn off your microphone whenever you're not using it. So there's different ways to do that. You can go in privacy settings here on Flash, and you can turn off your microphone. But keep in mind you will need that microphone for calls if you use your phone for phone calls. Now, what about battery life? I know a lot of people complain. I get like a full day battery, but I mainly use my laptop. So uh, that's not as big an issue for me. But say I go out of town. If I need battery, I have this $12 battery here. It gives me four additional full charges on my Pine phone. And that's only 12 bucks on Amazon. So you can't beat that. And really, for me, I have not much to complain about. When you consider things, the Pine phone itself is actually a full-size computer. And when you consider the battery life that way, it's really not bad at all. You've got a full-size Linux computer in your pocket with a touchscreen, with a cellular modem, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, microphone, speakers, compilers for C, C++, you got Python, Perl interpreters, you've got a variety of shell choices. There really is a lot going for this Pine phone, and I think it's really important to help promote the Pine phone, the Librem 5 as well, the Librem 5. I really like what they're doing as well. Uh, they even have the removable modem there. That's a really cool feature. I have G Potter. I use that for my podcast. That's something I do when I want to set up or play podcasts. Great thing about the camera. Now the front facing and the other camera is working really well. Uh, in fact, the focus is really not bad at all. I can get a decent picture with my camera now. Let me take a look at my keyboard to show you. So as you can see, it focuses right in on the keyboard. Very nice, very cool. And the tour sticker, of course. So you got both cameras working really well. Now we have gestures where I can just toss programs out and there's no need to use the X anymore. We have some great options here. There's so many cool podcasts here on G Potter where you can freely search for new podcasts on SoundCloud or G Potter without even needing an account. So Mobian has come a long way. It's got a lot of really cool things going for it. I'm going to be covering some more of the privacy protections and, and some of the security as well. Uh, you can even use Inkscape, which is really awesome. The fact that you can basically draw with Inkscape right there on your screen. And as I mentioned, my browser on the Pine phone... What I do is I have a direct connection to Falcon, the browser I showed you guys right here. You can find it right on the software repository. I also have right to the left of that, I have a Signal Messenger clone. Now I can do encrypted messaging. I can have videos sent. I can have videos uh, that actually play back with sound smoothly. If you like the video, please share it and subscribe. And I will be back later to talk more in depth about some of the different security features that you can add and some of the privacy features you can add on your own Pine phone or Linux system. And a lot of the stuff that applies to Linux in general is going to apply directly to the Pine phone because it essentially is a Linux computer in your pocket with a touch screen and a cellular modem. How cool is that? That's what I got today, guys. Like the video, share, subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on the Pine phone.